how to create a noise brush in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC 220, but I could be using 219, 218, and much the same approach could be used there. The only difference probably would be the pattern, the structure of the folders, but patterns, how you define them, all exactly the same. Something like this. Now, obviously you don't have to create something exactly like that, but the first thing you can do is create the noise. So I'm just gonna quickly edit and fill, and I'm gonna do white. I've got white background. Now I'm gonna go for a filter. So filter menu, and there's a number of other noises. There's one in filter gallery, but there's obviously noise down here. You've got add noise. So add noise. Now I'm gonna go for monochromatic and Gaussian, but uniform, you could vary the amount. And of course, what you can do, maybe use this, maybe very, very faint noise, and then go to the edit menu and define pattern that way. Or you can set it a bit higher, and you can do it three, five, 10 times, build up a whole library of different noise patterns. Click OK. So you've got your noise now. What you can also do is is you can modify the noise. You don't have to keep it exactly the same. You can always go to filter, maybe stylize and oil paint, or maybe go to filter and blur, just add a little bit of blur to it. So you can just blur it slightly, though that might create a little bit of an edge. So possibly not the best of things, but you can do whole loads of tweaks to this noise design. But after that, what you can do, go to edit and define the pattern. So it's stored away in your patterns panel. So just give it a name, click OK. So you got that. So a noise brush. Well, what you need to do, of course, is to use a brush. Now, I'm just gonna quickly, again, fill this with white. I could fill it with black or any other color, of course. So start from a, there. Go to the brush tools. So you've got the brush tools over there. There's a brush, and I'm just using a very basic one. You can find a whole range of like general brushes. I'm gonna go with the soft round. And also, I'm just gonna go with normal to start with. But you can use all the other blending modes to create some interesting effects if you want to do it that way. So now what you can do, you can just apply it. Now I've got blue there, I don't want that, I want black. So I'm just gonna go with black. But to get the noise, now I don't want shape dynamics, it doesn't matter of course, I could use shape dynamics to vary the size, etc. But I'm gonna use, the key one here is texture. So I go to texture and you've got here, you've got the patterns. And just go down to the one I've just created. Obviously, these ones I've created earlier. So click, select that. And so that pattern preset has been selected. And the great thing about this one is that you've got a preview. So you've got a preview. Now I'm using a pen. So all this is with pen. But of course, if you've got a mouse, it basically applies the effect just the same. But you can obviously tweak it and modify it in numerous other ways. And it's got pen pressure. So that's useful with a pen. So I've got pen pressure there. And what I can do, that's set to black. And you can set the scale. And then you can apply your noise and you can see the design. You can see the design down there that you're gonna get. So you can just apply it. Well, there it is. So straight away you've got noise there. I'll apply it just to noise to that part. And this is the thing, if you apply noise just generally, you just got, say, the noise filter. You can't, and of course I'm applying it to a white document there. But you can apply it to an image, you can use it to gradients, etc. It doesn't have to be, but it's just a bit clearer to see it here. And also, of course, you can use blending modes, maybe use darken, etc., to apply different ways. And you can apply it once or twice, and you can see you can create different densities there. So you can just, and also, of course, you can vary the size of the brush. You don't have to keep the size, you can change the size jitter, and all those sort of things. Brush tips, you can change different brushes as well. Don't have to keep the same. Obviously, there's a variety of different brushes, whole range of different brushes that you can use combined with the noise. So you can create some very interesting noise brush effects using this. But I'm just going for the basic round brush, just to demonstrate. So back to texture. So you've got scale. Well, what you can do, of course, you can push that up. Now you can't do that, obviously, with the noise filter. You can't vary it from different areas. So you can apply different noises, different places. Don't change that brightness, not yet. I'll demonstrate that. And you apply again, change it there, change it there, change it there. And also, another thing you can do, of course, is that you can now you can create all kinds of really sort of unusual grains and rough noises there. 
You can also change the color. Now I'm going to go with blue. Obviously, I could go for red, green, etc. But you can add additional color as well. Now I could go for swatches. Go to the swatches panel. I'll find all the various panels here. So brush settings, that's the key one. But swatches, etc. Layers, all in here. Okay, go for pink. And you can apply different there, noise effects on top of that. We'll go down to that one or maybe red now of course what you can do you can go to edit and fill and set white i can use black and i'm going to go with white so cut and then you can see you can apply your noise brush that way to the white so you've got the scale also what you can do you can change the brightness so you can make it like that if you want so it gets really intense noise you might want that or you might want the other way where it's very very faint so just a more light scattering of noise maybe very subtle noise applied then now there is a structure to it you can see that you can see it. obviously what you need to do if you want to really create because the noise the edge there's going to be an edge it's not going to anything that, but you can just just about make that edge coming out there so just increase it maybe the noise so you can go see a lot bigger and you won't see that edge then or maybe create a very large document maybe two three thousand by three thousand to create your noise pattern that's the easiest way just to get around that issue of maybe a, a seamless edge but i'm just going to go back now to there Oops, and we'll go all that way back. Let's go edit and fill again. Back. Now we also can modify, you can modify the contrast. So I'm just going to set it there. Contrast. And so you can make it much more intense. So you can see uh, like that. Or you can go to the contrast. Like that. There's a number of options you can use. Also, I'm using texture each hit tip. And you can turn that off and it's a more flat sort of effect, which is fine as well. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm just going to put that on. And you can, um, it's obviously multiply. So if you go for multiply. Now, personally, you can just see the edge there is a bit grainy. But I like, there's a number of ones that you can try out. So I'm going to go with height. You can also modify the depth. And that's quite nice for you, you can create. And of course, with the uh, pen pressure, you can... Just modify just slightly that. So you can create all kinds of different designs using the depth. Now I'm not using any of these, these depth settings as well, but you can, of course. Put those back down to zero and depth, I'm gonna keep fairly low so you can just see it just as basically noise and pen brusher. Yeah, you don't have to have that on if you don't want that. You can just have it off. Like that. That's a run through of all those. But you, of course, can do more than that. You can more just than creating some noise. What you can do, of course, you've obviously got the colours. So you can go over here, apply green. And you can obviously vary the size of the brush. You don't have to go with that size of brush. You can make it a bit bigger. Maybe not that big. So it's going to be a bit slow if it's... Uh, so 500, go to yellow, but you've also got blending modes as well. So you've got blending modes, so you can go to, say, darken. You can see light just like that over there, maybe pink, and maybe lighten. And so on and so on. So you can try a whole range, or maybe different. That was the one that started the whole thing. You can see with that, you can create some very unusual Go with white. All kinds of different unusual designs can be created using that. But also what you can do, you can always apply it on a layer. That's another option. Of course, also what you can do, you can apply effects. So I'm just gonna quickly go to say like filter. So blur and Gaussian blur maybe. So you can see and apply it like that. And then apply again there. I'm not going to go with difference, I'm just going to go back to normal so you can 
actually see the noise brush there. You can add effects, also things like filters and stylized maybe oil paint, and that creates an interesting effect there. You can see the effect of oil paint stylization set high there. Now, what also you can do, like I said, I mentioned before, because it's going any further, you can go with layers. So you can add it to a layer. So just add some noise to a layer. And of course, what you can do then is you've got the layer there. You can apply effects to it, maybe layer, layer style, and bevel and boss, drop shadow. You can add a drop shadow to that, the noise. And of course, then you can hold down the alter option key and duplicate the design. Turn so and actually drag, and you can see the design there. So you can create all kinds of different unusual designs using that. Now I'm going to go back again. Let's go to history. I'm going to go all the way back to there because what I want to do, I'm just going to finish off, show some effects, and this is and also quite a useful one. Actually, probably go for edit and fill. I prefer applying on black. So you've got your design there. Simply apply. And again, like I say, you can vary the scale, you can vary the brightness. But what you can do, you can go to filter, and I always like this one. This is why I wanted to finish off with this one, because filter and liquefy. Liquefy is great with this, I think. So I'm just going to go over here to the good old, I'll never forget, forward warp tool. Never remember it's called forward warp tool. It's not exactly something that I think, oh, it's a forward warp tool. However, what you can do, of course, is you can warp the noise. And you might want to avoid the edges. You can create some very unusual noise effects there. Click OK. So you've got your design there. And of course, what you can do, you can go and change the color. I'm just going to go to swatches, maybe red. And then, of course, what you can do, you can go to filter and liquefy again. And you can sort of distort that as well to create all kinds of very unusual effects. And of course, you can combine it with layer. So layer and new layer. Oops. Layer and new layer. And I'm going to apply, say, blue. So you've got your blue there. And then go to filter and liquefy. And you can just modify that and distort that as well to create all kinds of different effects. And of course, what you can do, again, hold down the alter option key and duplicate that noise to create all kinds of very unique noise effects. And once you've finished, of course, what you can do, layer menu and flatten image. So there you have it. Do that. And of course, you can always go to adjustments and maybe add some vibrance and tweak it, heart's content. And maybe other adjustments, of course, image menu, hue and saturation, that over. You don't want that colour scheme, maybe go for that. Something like that. Anyway, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always have new tutorials about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Critter, Painter, Illustrator, other things of Creative Cloud, and many, many, many more. Please add some comments, always appreciate it. Always be nice to hear what you think about the video, what I could have done better, what more things I could explain, maybe. Just let me know. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.